2 Kings chapter 6. And the sons of the prophets, they've been showing up quite often, said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. They've outgrown the old place. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we will dwell. And he answered, Go ye. So let's have a building program. They sought Elijah, thought out permission. He said, Let's go do the work. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So Elijah was going to remain behind. They're like, come, come with us. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling, that's the only place that word shows up, felling a beam, working it, the axe had fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, Master. That's the title of respect, Master. He's in charge. So when you get these movies of the force and master and and then you get uh, these uh, Japanese and Oriental master in karate and all that, that's, that's stealing from the Bible. It's a title of respect. They're not worshiping him. And then Jesus turns around and tells us today, call no man your master. So don't go back in the Bible and say, well, I got the title master. Well, see, look, they called Elisha master. Okay, but on this but on this side of the New Testament, they do say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is in the New Testament, even though Christ hasn't died yet. So in the Gospels, which is between the Testament, today Jesus says, call no man your, your master. We're not to have those titles of doctor and priest and father and all that. You may see them in the Old Testament, but not today. And it fell into war. He said, Alas, Master, for it, for it was borrowed. And Leviticus 6, 1 through 7 states, Hey, you lost the axe head, you owe an axe head. And it's almost like they wouldn't be able to afford the axe or that particular one. And the man of God said, where fell it? And he showed him the place right over there. <laughs> and he would be Elijah cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Now, I'm not going to do this as a joke or as entertainment. But let's take a look at what this iron did as a miracle of Elisha. 1 Kings 5.9. And you may go, ha, 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 but I'm showing you scripture. And I say quite often, 1 Kings 5.9, the Holy Spirit does not play Scrabble. He doesn't have a bunch of letters on, on his tile and say, well, what kind of letter can I come up with that? What word can I do with this? No, the Holy Spirit carefully chooses each word in the King James Bible. And if you were to add or subtract a word from the Bible, you don't end up with the Bible and how the scientific, how the prophecy, how this verse with that verse matches if you change it so first kings 5 9 my servants shall bring them down from lebanon onto the sea and i will convey them by sea in floats that's the word i want to look at so what we're going to do is we'll bring these trees down the timber the lumber and they'll be floating floating You've seen a log float. Isaiah 25, 11. Isaiah 25, 11. And I want to show you something. What the Bible is saying here is we just read. Okay, we're done reading. This is a miracle. We're talking about Jewish people. Jewish people require a sign. So Isaiah 25, 11. 
We saw the word float. We understand what float is. The Holy Spirit knows what F-L-O-A-T. So when we get to Isaiah 25, 11, And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, as he that swimmeth spreads forth his hands to swim. So the Holy Spirit, Isaiah, knows what swimming is. Now when we come back over here, here's an ox head. Everybody's seen an ox head. Uh, you know, there's many different kinds, but here is an. Uh, the Bible says iron did swim. It comes out of that water. It's on the top of that water. It's not floating, like those. It's swimming. How? That's a miracle. That's a miracle. That's something no other man can do. Besides the fact is that iron is floating. You're not going to get no iron that's going to float. And not only that, watch what it said. And the iron did swim. Now, I don't know if it was doing the backstroke like Isaiah 25 says about a man that's swimming. But it didn't float because we saw the word float in 1 Kings 5. So let's look at the miracle as it is. That's truly, that's two miracles in one with that iron. Swimming is actually moving in your own accord in the water. Yeah, so here it is. It it's, wasn't in a current. It wasn't. Nope. And it, it, that's weird. It moved towards Elijah on its own. And that's a possibility too. That it was like out in the middle of the river and it came to them. And therefore he said, take it up to thee. So it's still in the water and bend down and get it. And he put it on his, put out his hand and took it. This is weird. That's that's a miracle. It's no miracle anybody else. Is there, or, or, re, find me somewhere in the Bible where metal starts swimming. Then the king of Syria. Okay, hold another topic. Ward against Israel, chapter five, verse two. Just chapter five, verse two. Verse 1, Naaman, king of Syria, verse 2, the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid. So Syria and Israel are enemies. And here we go at it again. Against Israel. And took counsel with his servants. This is the king of Syria. Saying, in such a such place shall be my camp. All right, over here, I'm going to build a camp. Over here, I'm going to build a camp. Let's go. And the man of God, Elisha, sent unto the king of Israel, saying, remember, he, he, we know who he is, Jehoram. But the name is not given. He's an evil, wicked king. Beware that thou pass not such a place. For thither the Syrians are come down. All right, so the king says, I'm going to set my camp here. Elijah walks up to the king and says, come here, king. What? Don't go over there. Why? The Syrians are there. Okay. Thank you. And the king of Israel sent to the place where the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. So the king of Israel has avoided this location that the, the Syrians have set up that we're going to get the king. This is a travel spot of the king. He's going to come through this area, and he doesn't. He completely goes all the way around it. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. Why have we not captured him? He's probably on a trade route. If he is set up in a place and he's waiting for the king of, of Israel to come to capture him, and he's not shown up, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Who's the traitor? Who on earth is telling that king we are here? And it looks like it's multiple spots. All right, we tried here. No, no, we tried over here. All right, who's telling that king? There is a traitor amongst us. And one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that speakest thou in thy bedchamber. Now let's read something that has been written long, long time ago. Ecclesiastes 10.20. Solomon's been long dead. 
I don't know if this guy would read, read Ecclesiastes, but 1020. A little birdie told me. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 20. You got to be careful what you say. This is a verily, verily, it's written twice in the Bible. Curse not the king. Oh, I know many Baptists have. And deities and governors and governorship of this country because they weren't their people. They didn't say curse not the Democrats, curse not the Republicans. It says curse not the king. I know America doesn't have a king, but it's a ruler. No, not in thy thought. Don't even think it. And curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which has wings shall tell the manner. And that gets kind of spooky. And then when you get into Beelzebub, the Lord of the Flies. But I'm, we're not going to go into that tonight. That's, a, that's an interesting study. So, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 20, 2 Kings 6, 12, speaks about somebody will tell what you say. You don't need a movie to spook you out. How about that? Can you imagine somebody reporting to somebody that you were talking about? And you, you're probably all thinking, no one, no one knows how much do you, how much do they know? So there's that. That's a Gentile, by the way, kind of quoting Ecclesiastes ten twenty. Probably doesn't even know he did that. Remember, Solomon is before Second Kings, and he said, "Go and spy where he is, Elisha, that I may send and fetch him." And it was told him, saying, "Behold, he's in Dothan." Now watch this. How powerful is Elisha? Ready? Therefore he sent thither horses, plural, chariots, plural, and a great host. He sends an entire army against one man. Come on, one man, couldn't he like send a brigade? Couldn't he send a... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Um, uh, a captain and his 50? <laughs> wow. A captain and his 50, that's 102. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that's 102 right there. That's a cap that was two captains in their 50s. Somehow the words got to Syria that this man has just killed 200, I mean, excuse me, 102 men. You better send an army after him. Why? Because he's got God on his side. They're not fearing God. They're fearing God's man. Great hosts, and they came by night. We're not going to come during the day where you can see his coming. Look at that. Now they're coming by stealth. Now they're coming. He's sleeping. We'll come. And compass the city about. So they encircled the city for one man. One man and God can do much. And when the servant of the uh, when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, "This would be Elisha. Alas, my master, how shall we do? Oh man, it, look, they they surrounded us. Oh no." Elijah. And he answered, Fear not. That's it. Elijah answered. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Yeah. Okay, Elijah. You better get yourself some breakfast because you don't realize what the situation here. There's a horse. I mean, he walks out the door. There they are. And he's already got the intent. They're after Elijah. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord Jehovah, 
Tell it. When I say Lord Jehovah, I'm not going to the Hebrew. I'm just telling you that that's who the God is, Lord Jehovah. I pray thee, open his eyes that he might see. And the Lord opened his eyes of the young man, and he saw. Behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots. Are they the Assyrians? I mean, I mean, are they the Assyrians? A fire round about Elijah. Now let's go to 2 Kings 2.11. 2 Kings 2.11. And it came to pass as they still went on, they talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire parted them sunder. You better be careful if you ever say, God, open up my eyes. Because that's a, that's a good part right there. That's that's God protecting Israel. And many years of my, of my being unsaved and many years working with the ministry of people I've done. And people you know, in prison and people I have met in the ministry. And when they get what we call the DTs. And they have been drinking themselves silly. And I mean silly, I mean to just be on conversation. They will tell you weird things of snakes wrapped around poles. They will tell you things of reptiles and dragons and all kinds of things that they see that no one else sees. And we've got scales in our eyes of the spiritual world. Now, Jesus alludes to the fact is that there are possibly angels that watch his children. There are angels over the churches, the church periods. This man goes out there, he sees an army, and he's fearful, and he would be. I mean, if you woke up tomorrow morning around your house was the army, the Air Force, and the Marines surrounding, they're after you. You would be in panic. And if God were to open up your eyes and you would see these horses and chariots of fire, now, when we read the story of Elijah going up to heaven, we read about that case of a horses and a, and a chariot of fire. But there are a lot more than that one case all surrounded on the mountains. There was a time that a man, yeah, he served idols and he did uh, his crystal ball through enchantments, but yet God used him god was with him i'm talking about balaam he's going down the road and his ass crunches his leg against the wall his ass stops him and goes another way and i'm not complete I, I i forget how the order goes on but then there's one point that that ass just stopped and knelt down and wouldn't go any further and that ass saw the angel of the Lord standing there with a sword in his hand. Baal never saw that until the Lord opened his eyes. There were men one day, they're walking down the road, two of them. And there's chick chatting, blah, 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 blah. And Jesus comes up and starts talking with them and say, Hey, what are you guys talking about? You know, this, this great prophet we had, this, who we thought were going to be the savior of the world. Oh, he just died in, in, in three days. Now the women say they seen his, his angel and they say that he's alive. But I, we don't know. We have no idea. And they sat down and had, had a meal with him. And they talked about the scriptures with him. And at that moment, then they saw, oh my, it's Jesus. And then he takes off, and they're like, didn't our heart burn in us? There is a spirit world around us that we have no idea the forces of good or the forces of evil. And when we come back over here to, oh, uh, what did we read that today? If, uh, Ephesians, let's see what happens in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter, no, excuse me, Ephesians, 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 yeah, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. There is a spirit world that our eyes are closed. Job 1 and 2 says, 
the devil, Satan, walks up and down this earth. You realize that at any time point of your day, you could have Satan walk right by you, checking things out. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, we read this as a family. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood. Shoot a gun, bang, bang. Bullets. We don't have that kind of battle. Because if you were to kill me as a Christian, I'd be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But against principalities, uh-oh, against powers, uh-oh, against rulers of darkness, uh-oh, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There are things all around us right now. There is the power of Satan working all around us. And we don't see what goes on. And there are plenty of times I guarantee God has done things for us that we've never seen unless he opened our eyes to be like here it goes now here's this this, this servant of elijah he's in dismay we're, we're, we're going to be taken captive and elijah said lord just open his eyes and the lord opened the eyes of the young man he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about elijah <laughs> Now, was that chariot fire and horses, was that for Elijah or was that for Elijah? Because here they are now surrounded by Elijah. Think about that. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed to the Lord and said, Smite this people. And this is the Syrian army. I pray thee with blindness. And he smote them with blindness. <laughs> God is listening to him. God is adhering to what Elijah said. He says, give him blindness. Give him blindness. How's that? Elijah's the man that, hey, go up, bullhead. Go up, bullhead. Curse you in God's name. And then the sheep bears come out. You don't mess with Elijah. And Elijah said unto them, this is the army. This is not the way. Neither is this the city. Follow me. And I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. So the blindness of Isaiah, I, 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 excuse me, Elijah has, he's got a particular plan. He says, to the man whom ye seek. Verse 12. And one of the servants said, none, my Lord, but, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, calls the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, go and spy where he is, where Elijah is. <laughs> and when Elijah tells these men, hey, I, I'll bring you to the man that you're... The man is standing there right now that said, Lord, blind them. Now, there's either two things. One or two things, maybe more. One thing is they came up and they had no idea who Elijah was totally. They're blinded on who this man is. And they step up before Elijah like, where is he? That's one possibility. Number two is, even before they approach, and as they're coming, Elijah says, okay, Lord, blind them. And now they're, well, where do we go? Well, what happened? What's going on? And Elijah walks up to him and says, all right, I'll bring you to the man that you come to, but it's really me. And it came to pass when they were come into Samaria. Remember, they were in Dothan. And now in Samaria, the capital of Israel. Then Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And I think that's where that, that part of that hymn, open my Lord's that I may see, I forget. And the Lord opened their eyes. Now, I'm not talking about the one with Fanny Crosby. When she said, Lord, I may receive my sight. That's the, that's the blind man in the book of John. But there's another hymn said, open, your, open my eyes 
And I may see it. I, I got it in the tip of my head. It won't come to my mouth. Open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Now they have to recognize there. Uh-oh, what are we doing here? We are now in the we are in the realms of the enemy right now. We're in the middle of the enemy. We're in trouble. And the king of Israel said unto Elijah, look at not even, not even named. When he saw them, my father. See, there's the title respect. What did Jesus say? Call no man your father. All right, it's good for the Old Testament, but it's good no more. See the power that Elijah has and see what the power is when you try to call your priest the father? I mean, they say priests have the power to get you into heaven. I mean, when you die, when you get those last rites, oh, you get a better door into heaven. That's not what it is. Shall I smite them? Imagine, by the way, when he says, my father, what is the aspect of the king of Israel? Is he not into religion? Is he not serving the wrong God? Does he not have his own prophets? Does he not have priests that are by his own will? Does he not have feast days according to his God? Does he not have an idol? Does he not have an image? And this guy walks up to Elijah and says, Father, Did we not read in Judges that a man had a, a man that was younger than he was and he would call him father? When that guy already had children? My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Oh, right, here's my enemy. Good. Can I smite him? Can I kill him? And he answered, Elijah, thou shalt not smite them. But they're my enemy. They want to kill us. Wouldst thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with the sword and with the bow? You're going out to war and you have captives. Would you kill them? Set bread and water. Notice how it doesn't say bread and wine. Set bread and water, peace, before them, that they may eat and drink and go, th go to their master, their ruler. The king who sent them coming to get me. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Why? Man, they treated you with respect. We went in there. We were in the midst of them. We're their enemy. And what did they do to you? Did they torture you? Man, we had the greatest venison meal. Ooh, we had some good old beef. And man, we had wine. And we had good refreshing water. We had grapes. And we had raisins. We had all kinds of bread. We just didn't have pork. <laughs> we had everything that they can eat. <laughs> you know that weird diet they got? Unlike what we got? We had all their luxuries. And if they could have eaten pork, they'd probably given us pork. We had a good old time with them. And after we were full and you know, maybe rested all night and had, had a Chinese nap, <laughs> here we are and count us. We're all here. Oh, okay. Let's leave them alone. And we're going to close right there.